What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. I'm Kelsey. This is Jessica, and we are reliving the best things that happened in this season with the Grizzlies. We had 100 games, Jessica, six preseason, 82 regular season, and 12 postseason. So we are going to now give you our four top games of the year. This one was hard. It was very hard. There's a hundred to choose from. And yet it kind of trickled out where it was like, all right, these four make sense, or at least they should be in anyone's top five. I guess you could like decide what you want. But one of them that has to be in it, and there's just no getting around it. You wouldn't always put a game against the Oklahoma City Thunder in these trying times on a list of best games, but this was just incredible. The Grizzlies come out, they beat the Oklahoma City Thunder by 73 points. It is the largest margin of victory in NBA history. That previous record had existed for 30 years before the Grizzlies come out and do that. They scored 152 points. You had 12 Grizzlies dressed. All of them played. All of them played at least 14 minutes. And then within that, nine of them scored double figures. It was just like this, the box score from this game, it sits on my desk. It sits on my desk too. Do oh. you ever find yourself being like, what's this random box score? Oh, it's the game that they won by 73 oh, points. Yeah, the cool thing is the Grizzlies broke so many records this year, franchise records, but this one stood out because it was not only NBA wide, but it's massive. Like that was a massive win. And even going into the fourth quarter, I think everyone in the arena was like, can we, like how far up can we get? Yeah, I made a really bad joke at halftime where I said if they won by 50, I would do my entire post-game show in the uh, Brian Kelly, the, the now LSU head football coach. He has like a pretty dodgy Southern accent. And I said I would do it in that Southern accent. And? It was a lame attempt. They won by 73, not 50. But you didn't so. go back on your word. I, I tried, and that's what matters. And the Grizzlies tried every single night. <laughs> I always think back at that game, though, because truly it was the example of like, it's a long season, like you said, 100 games eventually. And so there are some times where you're tired going into work at night. It's just the way it is. It's a random game against the Oklahoma City Thunder. You're Without like, right. some of their stars. Without, and especially Shea didn't play. And John Morant wasn't playing for the Grizzlies at that point. And you're just sitting here thinking, all right, let's just chalk this one up. And instead, it ends up being one of the most historic performances you'll ever see. So Something you definitely will Can't miss any games here. All right, Jess, I have two playoff games. So do you want to do your final regular season? Sure, game? let's uh, keep it chronological here. And we'll go with another example of things just not always going as, as you expect is the way we'll describe it. So this was with five games left in the regular season. The Phoenix Suns come to town and the Phoenix Suns are playing with all of their guys. The Grizzlies are playing with four of their five starters on the bench. Dylan Brooks is the only starter who plays and our colleague Lang Whitaker likes to refer to this version of the Grizzlies as the zombie Grizz, which is when it's primarily driven by the bench unit and you have the zombie Grizz come out and hand the Phoenix Suns, the full strength Phoenix Suns, a loss here at FedEx Forum. And not only are the Grizzlies playing without most of their starters, Taylor Jenkins got ejected from this game in the second quarter. Yeah, I'm gonna add to this also. The Phoenix Suns were one win away from beating their franchise record in wins. So they, they wanted this game. They didn't come in full strength, but like, eh. This is when they wanted, and the bench unit showed out. They did, and Santi Aldama's reverse dunk is, is the highlight and the bench unit reaction to all of that. And, and by that point, the bench unit is most of your starters, but it was just so fun. And Taylor Jenkins described it as a culture win. And his quote afterwards was, this is who we are and we're gonna be here a long time. And that is a good statement to make. Yes, okay, I'm gonna go in with two playoff wins now. One from each series because we love a little playoff action here in Memphis. So I'm gonna go rewind again, do the noise. Yeah, I'm gonna rewind back to the Minnesota series. <laughs> this one is game five. It was a uh, win at home. It tied the series, or the series at this point was tied two to two. So this win uh, got the, the Grizzlies to their third their third win in the series. Um, so it was a one point game with one minute left. There was a whole lot that happened in this one minute. It was back and forth the whole time. Eight seconds left though. John Morant after a big shot from Minnesota that went in. John Morant hit two foul shots. Uh, and then 3.7 seconds on the clock, Minnesota hits a big shot to tie it. It was just, I, I don't know what I was feeling in this moment, but it wasn't a good feeling. It was, maybe excitement's good, but like more nervous, anxious. That whole series was a ball of nerves. The entire yeah. playoff experience was a ball of nerves. And like when Anthony Edwards hits that three, you're like, ah, oh, he really is that dude. Like, yeah. here we go. And then, but then Anthony Edwards is young and he gambled <laughs> and it was a gamble that didn't pay off for them yep. but paid off significantly for yeah. John Murray. The Grizzlies get it uh, on the sideline. Again, there's the Anthony gamble. He jaw gets open going towards the net and up and under with one second left and then the infamous 
tall 12. Get a bucket jaw. Just yeah. get a bucket. That was the play. It's that easy, and sometimes it is. And that's where it's like, oh, that's why you need a player like John Morant. This game was so crazy, and just how it all played out. Like you had Eric Spolstra talking about it in his post-game press conference from their game earlier that like, evening. Of course, he had a layup. Of yeah, course. of course, and like <laughs> laughing about it, and just talking about the Grizzlies and in, in his own media availability. And then I'll always remember this game as the game, the Brandon Clark hug on John Morant. As and he's he said, do, as thank he's doing God the for John Morant. It was just like a beautiful moment. Yeah, Don't I was going to reenact it, but um, that's happened. Jessica, my last favorite game of the year. You can either smile or you can cry. Whatever emotions you're feeling are valid. It is the last win had inside of this FedEx Forum building. It was fun. It was huge. It was the semifinals against the Golden State Warriors. The Grizzlies pulled out a 39-point win over the Golden State Warriors. Three guys with 21 points each. Seven guys hit double-digit scoring. There was 37 assists on 47 field goals. Of course, it was the whoop that trick that was so fun. The arena, I have never felt it so loud. The other team started dancing to it. That has to leave just like the best memories for Grizz Nation, for us, for the team, because the last time the Grizzlies were here in this building it was a massive win. Yeah, when you talk about the theater and the dramatics of the NBA, and particularly in the NBA playoffs, this game had it all. And you had Steph Curry earlier in the day being asked what their game plan was. He was like, whoop that trick. The epitome of mess around and find out what that actually means. Because I don't know, I've only lived here since 2016, so I don't want to speak out of turn. But that had to have been one one of the best renditions of Whoop That Trick of all time with Al Capone literally going Steph Curry in your face in the middle of it and everybody having like the exuberance that filled FedEx Forum all season long. It felt like even though it ended up being the last game played there, it ended up a bummer in itself that the series didn't make it back for a game seven. The fact that that was the resounding memory of it all and again, how was this team going to respond without John Morant? And they did what they've done all season. Taylor Jenkins, we deep. We deep, guys. Live with that memory. It was the best one to have ending this season. Next season is almost upon us. It's not. It's still a little bit away. But thank you guys for watching and recapping the last season. It's been great. I'm Kelsey. I'm, that's, I'm Kelsey. I'm Jessica. I'm Kelsey. That's Jessica. I wish I was Jessica. Make sure you're tuned in all off-season on GrindCityMedia.com.